Hey guys, it's Bart Johnson here. Today I want to talk to you about something that I'm sure everybody has heard about and some people may know about it, some people may know a little bit about it, and some people may not know anything about it, and that is 4K. So I want to go over what exactly 4K is, uh, what the pros of it are, what the cons of it are, and then whether it's something that you should be looking for in a camera or not. Uh, so the first thing I want to get to is what is 4K? So part of me checking my notes here, I have a lot of information and I want to make sure that I get to it all. Um, so one of the main things that everybody always says is 4K is four times the resolution of HD. This is true. It means that four 1080 screens will fit into a 4K resolution screen. So that's a sort of simple way of putting it. But if you want to get a little bit more technical, there's a little bit more to it than that. So there's two different kinds of 4K. There's what's called DCI 4K and UHD 4K. So DCI 4K, the DCI stands for Digital Cinema Initiatives, um, is actually the resolution of 4096 by 2160. So the 4K comes from it being 4,000 pixels, 4096 by 2160. Now, UHD, or ultra high definition 4K, is 3840 by 2160 pixels. And this is the one we most commonly see in television sets um, and you know, online, and it's what most people just call 4K, even though it's technically UHD and just under 4,000 pixels. But there's a reason for that. Uh, DCI 4K is actually a little bit wider. There's a few more pixels, and it's commonly used in theater projections of 4K. Uh, but the aspect ratio isn't 16 by 9 like our home theater screens and most of our computers and all sorts of stuff like that. So a 16 by 9 equivalent is 3840 by 2160, which is UHD or ultra high definition 4K. So that's why we're most commonly used to seeing the UHD 4K 3860 by 20, or 3840, excuse me, by 2160 pixels. Most times you hear somebody say 4K, that's what they're going to be referring to because that's what we most commonly consume if we're not in a movie theater. Now, uh, like I said, 4K basically stands for 4,000, stands for 4,000 pixels. But it's a little bit interesting the way we measure this because it's 4,000 pixels horizontally. So we're measuring horizontally now. Now, what we used to do when it was 1080p was we actually measured the pixels vertically. The, the resolution of 1080p is 1920 pixels horizontally and 1080 pixels vertically. So all of a sudden we've switched from measuring vertically to measuring horizontally, which can confuse some people and I'm not exactly sure why they did that. Now, because of that, you'll sometimes hear uh, 4K being referred to as 2160p. That is simply referring to it in its measurement in vertical pixels of 2160. So 4K is the same thing as saying 2160p. And by those same standards, if you think about 1080, 1080 is 1920 pixels horizontally, which means it's almost 2000 pixels, which means that if we were going by the 4K measurement of going horizontally, 1080p is actually just under 2K. So 2K and 1080p are almost the exact same resolution. So now that we've gone through and talked about the exact resolution of 4K, I want you to remember that 4K is just a measure of a resolution, nothing more. It is not necessarily a measurement of quality. It is simply the number of pixels that are in the image that make it 4K. So a way to think about this is think about when we didn't even have 4K and all we had was 1080p cameras. Now, all these cameras shot 1080p, 
but that doesn't mean that every camera shot the same quality of 1080p. Some images looked better, some looked worse. And the exact same thing goes for 4K. 4K just means that that's the size of the image. It doesn't necessarily refer to the quality. So all 4K is not created equal. That's why you see out there that almost everything these days can shoot in 4K, all the way from high-end cinema cameras to the smartphones in our pockets. There are tons of devices out there that can shoot 4K. That doesn't mean when you put those images side by side that they're going to be of the same quality. So keep that in mind. Just because a phone says it shoots 4K doesn't mean that it's going to stand up to the quality of a high-end cinema camera also shooting at 4K. There's a lot of different factors that go into the quality of the image that comes out of a camera. Uh, stuff like what the quality of the sensor is, the size of the sensor, the bit rate that the camera is recording at, the compression of the codec that the camera is using. All of these things are gonna affect the, the amount of data and the quality of the final image even though they're all going to be 4K, the images could come out very different in quality. And that's something you need to look at just like you would look at if you were choosing a camera that shot 1080p against another camera that shot 1080p. So now that we've gone over all that, let's get into the pros and cons of using 4K while recording. Uh, now obviously there are pros to it. Um, and one of the pros is that it can mean that you're going to get higher quality video. Um, if something is recording in 4K, it means that the sensor is able to capture a lot of detail. Um, it's, you know, it's capturing a lot more information than a 1080p sensor would be. So there is the potential for a higher quality image there inherently in just shooting in 4K. Um, so you're gonna get great detail for the most part um, over a 1080p camera because you're capturing so much more information um, in those little details with each frame that you record. A, another prime example is if you are recording in 4K but you're mastering to 1080p, you're definitely going to see some advantages. Like right now, I'm recording this in 4K, but I'm going to be outputting the video at 1080p, which means that I'm going to be shrinking down the video from the 4K resolution down to 1080p, which means everything is going to look a bit sharper. It's taking all that information and it's squeezing it down, and so everything's going to look a bit sharper. Just like if you took a 1080p image and tried to scale it up to the size of 4K resolution, it would start falling apart and looking a little blurry. This is the opposite effect. You're gonna be squeezing it down and you're gonna have excess information and so you're gonna get a really sharp, really clean looking image most of the time. Another pro if you're recording in 4K and gonna be mastering everything out to 1080 is that you have a lot of resolution outside of that 1080p frame if you do a 1080p crop. If you have a 4K image, say it's this big, and you're taking a 1080p size window of that right in the middle, you've cropped in, but you still have plenty of resolution outside of that, which allows you to do a couple of different things in post. One thing it'll allow you to do is it'll allow you to get multiple shots in one. You can get a wide and a close up. This can be really handy if you're shooting interviews and you only have one camera but want it to look like you have a wide and a close up shot. You can do that if you record in 4K and output to 1080p. Another thing that you're able to do in post if you've shot in 4K is you're going to have the ability to reframe your shots. You've got some wiggle room to move stuff around, do a little bit of reframing. You're going to be able to resize your shots if you need to, if it ends up being a little bit tighter than you liked. And you're going to be able to do post stabilization without losing some of the corners of your image. If you use something like Warp Stabilizer, you've got excess data, it's going to be able to stabilize and your, your frame is going to remain roughly what you want it to be. You also have the ability to do some artificial camera movement in post. Uh, you can animate zooms, you can animate pans, and you can animate tilts all in post just off of a static 4K shot. 
And finally, a good benefit of 4K is that you do have all that resolution, all that information, and all that detail there in your image. So that's gonna be great if you're doing any work uh, with visual effects or any other post-production tricks because you have all that extra information so you can go in there and really fine tune your work and then output it to a lower resolution and it's going to just match and look so much better because you had a lot more detail and information to work with from the start. Now, like I said, obviously there's going to be cons as well with 4K. So let's get into what some of those are. Obviously, since we are talking about four times the resolution of 1080p, that means we're gonna have a lot more data. So your file sizes can become very, very large. Obviously, different cameras will have different levels of compression, uh, but a rule of thumb is that your 4K footage is going to be larger than your 1080p footage. Now, that's not only costly on media that you have in the camera, but it's also costly for storage after the fact. You're gonna to have to invest in plenty of hard drives if you're gonna be doing a lot of shooting. So you have to have everything in place for a full 4K workflow and be ready for those large file sizes. Now, something else, like I said, since 4K is four times the resolution, you're also capturing a lot more data per frame. The camera is writing a lot more data to the media card while it's recording. Now, that means you're going to need some faster media than we needed in the past. Some cameras, depending on their compression, can push it out to you know some faster SD cards, but a lot of other cameras need stuff that's more expensive, like CFast cards that just came out. And so you have to take into account that you might be spending even more money on media that's capable of handling the data rates of 4K as well. Again, in dealing with that large footage, you're gonna have to make sure you have a computer that can handle that. Um, even some of the fastest computers I've ever used sometimes have difficulty trying to edit and work through the large file sizes of 4K footage. Um, my computer sometimes, if I don't uh, reduce the resolution while editing a bit, will get a little bit choked up and I have a fairly powerful machine. So you have to make sure that all of your equipment on the back end, hard drive storage, and even your machine itself that you're gonna be editing on is all up to spec and is gonna be able to handle a 4K workflow. And another con to 4K is that right now, there's really no widely accepted method of consuming 4K. Uh, it just, it's too new and it's not widespread enough right now in the consumer market. Um, yes, more and more people are getting 4K TVs, but the, the content just isn't there for consuming 4K yet. There are some services like Netflix um, that are starting to stream stuff in 4K, but again, that's super, super compressed because it's coming in over the internet. Um, you know, you can maybe get 4K Blu-rays, but they're super expensive and you have to have a special player. Um, websites like YouTube do allow you to upload in 4K, but to be honest, most people are consuming YouTube videos on their phone, on their tablet, or on their screen, on their computer at home, and most of them do not have 4K displays. Um, so it's just not necessary yet. Obviously, it is necessary for some kinds of projects. Uh, if you're doing client work or for something that's gonna be shown in a theater on the big screen, you would like to, to use that. Uh, but for most consumers and the majority of the population, consuming 4K just isn't something that's happening yet. So now that we've gone over everything, it's a lot to take in. We know what 4K is, we know why we should use it, we know why we shouldn't use it. So what's the final verdict? Well, the final verdict for me is that I do shoot in 4K. I have a few 4K capable cameras. I shoot 4K on my drones. I'm shooting 4K right now. Um, I shoot 4K whenever I can, and I'm looking to replace some of my older 1080p cameras with 4K capable replacements. Um, and that's for various reasons. It's not just because of my YouTube channel, it's also because I run a business and I do a lot of client work. So 4K has a lot of advantages for me in shooting interviews, 
some clients actually request 4K and my ability to get that higher quality even when I'm outputting to 1080p makes 4K worth it for me. Now, what you have to ask yourself is, is 4K worth it for you? Is it something that you need to dive into right now? Or do you wanna wait until it becomes a little bit more mainstream? Like I said, it's not being commonly used and really the post end of it and even some of the cameras are quite expensive. It's not cheap. So if you're running a YouTube channel and just shooting videos for that, you know, 4K, you probably don't need it. Um, I could be wrong, it's always gonna change on a case by case, but you need to take a look at what 4K can do for you and if you have the resources to start bringing 4K into your workflow and if it makes sense. So there you go guys, I know this was a little bit long-winded, but like I said, there's a lot of information there, a lot of stuff that I wanted to clear up and make sure everybody knew. Um, so I hope this information was helpful to you guys. Please feel free to share this video wherever you'd like because the more people that know all about this, the more information that gets out there, you know, just the more educated everybody is, the better everything will be. Um, and please go ahead and check out all the other videos I have on the channel. I'll have a lot more stuff coming where I describe all sorts of things in the world of filmmaking and clarify stuff for you guys. So please go ahead and subscribe to be notified of those. And I will see you guys next time.